We're uh, pretty close to 11. I'd like to call up Mr. Tommy Porter. I'm going to let him introduce himself. I'm sure a lot of you guys know him. And uh, he's got some very good words. And he's going to be, uh, what we do is we open up and individually, as me being in the hallway. Every morning we wake up, we give thanks to the Creator, whether it's in a big way or a little way. As long as we give thanks and we say thank you for what we have, and thank you for letting me wake up another day to be here on Mother Earth. We give thanks, and we give thanks for everything around us, everything that sustains us. And we honor the animals and the wind and everything that this world is about. But one of the big things we all need to remember is to be a human being, and in order to be a human being, we need to watch out for one another. So during your day today, I want everybody to check on an elder, make sure they're okay, make sure they need a drink of water, maybe they need something to eat, maybe they just need someone to talk to. But that's what we're gonna do today, we're gonna check on the elders. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tommy Porter. translated into English means uh, the place in the sky or in the solar system. There is another earth there similar to this earth and that's where our great 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 grandma came from there and was transferred here to the planet earth. That's what our creation says. And so, when we were allowed to be here, brought by the woman, and that's why all the Iroquois nations are a matrilineal. We follow the woman. For instance, my father is a Oneida, but my mother is a Mohawk, and my mother had five kids. And our father is Oneida, but we're not Oneidas. We are Mohawks, because our mother is a Mohawk. And her mother was a Mohawk. So we follow the woman. His father 
he, he just plants the seed and it goes on. <laughs> but that's why we are not for lineal, because you always know who's your mother, for sure. And so anyway, when we were allowed to come here, the power B of creation took the dirt from this under the direction of our grandmother that came here from the other planet. And there was a, what you call a mutual assistance going on. And they took the dirt and the water from the ocean and the elements of nature and they began to make a body of a human the way it looks like in the other world. And when they finished, they stand up that woman and that man, a man and a woman. And they put it side by side, and they said, you will walk now on the Mother Earth. And then he blew in their mouth three times. And they blinked their eyes and moved their arms and had a mobility. And he said, now, in my language, they say, that means you will make replications of yourselves. And so that's what you and I are, is a reproduction of our mother and our father. And that come in all since the beginning of this earth. And because he made us new, our mind was blank like a cassette tape that's got no music, no talk. So you have to load it up. And so with this man and woman that was created, our great, great grandma and grandpa, the creator said now, okay, Niku Hlata, means I will now give them a way to think and how to know things. And he programmed our great grandfather and our great grandmother as to what their duties are, how they will survive in this world. And so this Thanksgiving that I'm gonna do, that's where it comes from. It is that instruction that was given to our great-grandpa and our great-great-grandma when they were allowed to live on this planet. And so now I ask you to be like a rabbit and put your ears way up so that you'll catch every word. For it is the original instruction given to all human beings at the beginning of the world. The original. Many people don't follow the original anymore. And so now the world is in trouble. Very big trouble. And here it goes. First, let us define what it is when we say creator or God as first important. If you add up all the human beings in the world and you add up all the animals in the world and you add up all the birds in the world and you add up all the fish in the world and you add up every life form and then you total all those lives. And the summarization of all those lives combined is what we call the Iroquois, the creator or God. So God is in every one of you. He's in every tree, he's in every bird, and he's in every animal, he's in everything that lives. And so when you hear the Iroquois or native say God, they're not talking about a simple little man. That's too minute. We're talking about a humongous power that created the universe. And that's the one that programmed our great grandma and great grandpa. And here's what our creator said. Whenever you have a meeting or an assembly such as we are gathered today, and that means political, spiritual, ceremonial. You must do this, this talk. We call it, in my language, Ohondo Galihuadekwam. Some people who translate it say, 
It's a Thanksgiving address. Yes and no. Some people say it's an opening prayer. Yes and no. But if I translate a hundred body my deck book exactly into English, a hondo means in the front of it or before it. A hondo. And then daliwa dekwan. Daliwa means issues or matters of importance. So before and in front of anything important, you must utter these words to ground you to what you're going to decide tomorrow. And so our Creator says to do this, and that's what I'm going to do now. And if you agree, each thing I say, all the Iroquois, if it's a real Iroquois, when they hear him say, and all the people, they'll say, if it's real, here it's called toll. Toll. That's how we say it in formal, uh, real Iroquois language. But if you are uh, traditional Iroquois, but you want to be a little bit modern, you can say, uh-huh. <laughs> But if you want to be an ultra modern, modern Iroquois, when you hear him say and that, then you can say, yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't matter which way you say, as long as you say something. Because the Creator is waiting to hear you because we are His creation. We are the sons and the daughters of that Creator. So, but I won't be saying it in Mohawk language because I know you won't understand me. Except few of you, but most here won't. And so when I say it, each one of my verse, I'm going to say, we gather our minds as one, and with one mind, we give greetings and thanks. And now we are agreed. Whenever you hear me say, and we are agreed, then you will say, yeah. Oh. oh. Or uh huh. Or yeah. <laughs> okay. Now we will proceed. And so now the Creator is the one that opened up this day for you and I, because Joe Brushak and his family sent invitation to all of us to come here to have a fun today, to bring crafts, to bring dancers, to bring storyteller of the old Iroquois or native people of North America. And so the Creator made the sun shine where we are. And he took all the big boulders and small pebbles away from our path so we won't trip and fall as we come here to Saratoga, this place. And so for that, nobody got hurt, nobody was injured to get here. And as I look about, I see everybody looks mighty fine. And so we say, Creator, we the people are of one mind. And we put it here in this space. Thank you. Thank you. Greetings and greetings and love and compassion. And then you and I, the people, will pick it up and we will throw it high into the universe. And we say, Creator, thank you. Greetings and love multiplied because you brought us here safe and in one peace and in good health. So now we say thank you, Creator, and our mind is agreed. Oh. You make wonderful Iroquois. <laughs> and then it is now, he says, when you come together, and I follow, you know, Kay Owen? Yes. I know I've seen her here somewhere a while ago. Uh, oh, there she sits way in the back, hiding. <laughs> and um, her her uh, grandpa uh, was uh, one of the chief of our nation. In fact, he was the chief of the family where I come from, of Bear Clan. And he used to, I copy him. He was a little, little man, thunder voice. And so he says, now when you go to the assembly, you start over here and you go around 
and you scope or you scan all the women, just the woman, leave the man out of it, only the woman, and you go all the way around, and every woman, elder woman, middle-aged woman, teenage girl, or even maybe a little baby in a cradle or a little baby girl. And he said you'll notice that the women at this assembly are the most beautiful women in the whole universe. And that's what's here today. And then he said, when you come to that realization, start again and scan it. This time leave the woman out and just look the men. Elder men, middle-aged men, teenage boys, and little baby in a cradle board, little baby boy. And he said, if you scan every man in your assembly, you will notice that our men are the most handsomest, good-looking guys, and so intelligent in the whole universe. And so when you put those most beautiful women and those most handsome men in our assembly is the best looking assembly in the whole world. And so what are we going to do about it? We're going to gather many thanks, many greetings, and many love, and we pile it up, and we give it to each other by saying hello with compassion and kindness, those of us that are brother and sister of the human race. And with that, love, we say hello to each other, and our mind is agreed. And then it is what our Creator did at the very beginning when the world was new. The Creator said, this earth is your mother. And in the creation of Iroquois, it is, tells in detail why that is said. But the Creator said, the earth is your mother, and I chose this earth because she is strong. And we chose this Mother Earth because she is consistent and ever giving. And she will help you and nourish you, the humans and the animals and all life forever. And so our grandma says to us as we were growing, and our grandpa said to us as we were growing, Every food that you and I and our little children eat every single day comes from our mother's body. Corn, beans, potatoes, string beans, watermelon, cantaloupes, peaches, cherries, plums, and the list goes on and on. And it all comes from our mother the earth. And she feed us everything that goes in our mouth every day and never stops. So let us think about that. Don't we have a wonderful mother? She never stops feeding and nourishing us since the beginning of time. And sometimes we as a human are inconsiderate or forgetful and some humans are done mean, and they drill and they bore through the Mother Earth's intestines, looking for resources and things. But did you know that even though that some of our people do that to our mother, that our Mother Earth, the one the Creator made, was such a strong, special woman that she never became more angered or so angered that she decided to throw us away as her children because of our forgetfulness or our abuse to her. No, she continues to give. She continues to nourish irregardless and she never threw us away. That's the kind of mother we have, the best mother in the whole universe. And so let us put our minds together as one. And then we put it in a symbolic, spiritual way, layer and layer of thank you, layer and layer of greetings, layer and layer of love and compassion. 
and then that big cloud touches the ceiling and you and I and our children will go at the perimeters of that big pile of thank you, greetings and love. We'll pick it up and we'll gently give it to our mother, the earth. And we say, Mother Earth, thank you. Thank you that you never threw us away. Thank you that you never abandoned us. Thank you that you never stopped feeding us. Mother Earth, we are your children. We salute and we give you our full love today and our mind is a breed. And then our creator did another thing. He made the waters on the Mother Earth. And then he made the rain come down and the snow on top of the mountains and down the hills and mountains and in the valleys. And as it passes Saratoga and Father New York and Syracuse and Chicago and Los Angeles, that water quenches our thirst every day. Because the Creator talked to the water and he told the water, your job is to quench the thirst of every animal and every bird and every humans. Your job is to purify their bodies, clean their bodies, make them healthy and strong. And so to this day, the waters quenches our thirst every day. And when our people cooks, they make the water, use the water. When we take a shower, we like it nice and warm. And then we feel good and clean. So the waters are still doing their job, what the Creator and Mother Earth told them to do. They have a spirit and they have a soul. And if that water ever shall die, then we will die. For we will now dry up. And that will be the end of all humans and animals and birds. But the water is still going. And if you don't believe me, just go to Niagara Falls and listen. Just take a look and you'll see the power that Niagara Falls has. Or if you go to a small little creek, you'll hear the whispering of the water talking. So the water is still going. And so I'm going to ask that we the people recognize that and be grateful by putting thank you, greetings and love before us. And then you and I together will wrap this thank you, greetings and love that fills this room. And we'll throw some to the north, to the west, to the south, and to the east. Until every river, every creek, every well, every spring, every ocean, every lake, every pond receives our thank you and our big, big love for quenching our thirst again yesterday and today. And so to the waters of the world, our human relatives says love and thank you to them and our mind is agreed. And then our creator made all the things that grow. There's a domestic things that grow in a garden called corn, beans, and squash. To the Iroquois, they call them the three sisters. They are the leaders of all domestic things that grow in a garden. And then there's the wild potatoes by the river, wild carrots and wild turnips, wild ginger, all kind of food everywhere. And so that's what the Creator did. Then our Creator made the berries, strawberries, first one after the winter, then raspberries, and blackberries, and blueberries, and gooseberries. Even the snow is flying, you can still pick berries. Creator loved us so much, he put everything there. And so it is, he planted medicine in the valleys, in the mountains, in the riverside, in the desert. So if sickness comes on you and me, we can go there and pick that medicine and we will get better. For every sickness, there is a medicine somewhere that can cure it. That's the way the Creator made this universe. And so all of those things, the vegetations, from the one we eat, to the medical, to the trees that give us apples, oranges, cherries, peaches, and plums, to the trees that give us oxygen that we can breathe, the Creator did it perfectly. And so all He asks is that we say thank you every day. 
And so with oneness of mind, we put thank you, greetings, and love. Until it touches the ceiling. And then we pick up that big thank you, and greetings, and love, and we send it north, south, east, and west. So every vegetation, every tree will receive our thank you and our love today. And our mind, again, is agreed. And then this is the most important one. It's the one here where the Mother Earth and the Creator, and I love saying this part because my grandmother used to emphasize it. And here's what Grandma said. When the Creator and Mother Earth created and put us on this earth, the Creator says, I want you every day to smile from ear to ear, show the whiteness of your teeth. I call it the Colgate smile. <laughs> I want to see every man and woman every day, minimally three times per day, sincerely smile and laugh and be joyful. Mimically, three times per day. And Grandma said, if you can't do that, if you cannot do that, then you have missed the whole point of why you were born. And you're going to die lonesome and lonely. So she says, don't forget, mimically, three times per day, I want you. And so she says, if I tickle you, it's because I want you to be joyful. I want you to show the Creator the whites of your teeth. And in order to make sure that happens, the Creator made the birds, and he put beautiful colored feathers on them. So as they fly where our head is, as we walk the earth, we see beauty. And then he told the birds, every morning when the night is finished, and the light come of dawn, all you birds will get up, because I gave you all different songs to the robin, the chickadee, the morning dove, all different song and tune and rhythms. And when you see the light just coming in the east horizon, all you birds will start singing to welcome the sun and the miraculous new day. And when the people and the deers and the bears hear you singing, you birds, you birds will be shaking up their mind so that boredom and lonesomeness will not find a home in their body and in their life. And so he chose the eagle to be the chief of all those birds. And to this day, every morning at dawn, the birds sing their most beautiful songs. Better than any orchestra in any land, they sing for the Creator and they sing for us. And so that the birds of the world, the eagle their leader, we send thank you, greetings, and love. And now our mind is agreed to do that. Then for the four sacred wind that brings the changing of the seasons. And I like this too, because our grandma and grandpa said, when Mother Earth gets tired of giving birth to the millions every day, you know how a woman who has three or four kids work every day and get tired at the end? Well, can you imagine Mother Earth? She gives birth to millions of kids. And at the end of each of her days, she gets exhausted. And so whenever she gets tired, the brother wind of the north and the brother wind of the east brings a white blanket of snow and covers our Mother Earth's body. So for six months or so, she's going to rest. And when she has sufficiently rested, the other two brothers from the south and the west wind will come and wake up Mother Earth by taking slowly the white blanket of snow off and then on Mother Earth's body there's a wall-to-wall -wall carpet of green grass and flowers of every color blooming everywhere. Little baby Irishmen are born, little baby Italians, little baby Mohawks, little baby Senecas born all over the place. Little baby Robins and life is renewed. And that's what the four wind does brings the changing of the seasons. And so I'm gonna ask our family here today that our mind becomes one, and we put a thank you and thank you and greetings and greetings and love and love. And then we'll pick it up and throw it east, south, west, and north so that every bird will receive our thank you for bringing joy to our life again today.
in our mind is agreed. To the thunder grandfathers who bring the rain that renews our creeks and rivers and wells that we will allow us have a fresh water to drink. To our grandfather the thunders to use the arrows of fire called lightning to burn the stagnation of the atmosphere to make it fresh and new. And they did it just right for us. And so to our grandfather thunder, we send thank you, greetings and love today and our mind is agreed. And then it is to our old brother's son. We call it in the Mohawk language, we say it this way. That means our older brother, the, the son of the day. That's what it means. And he shines the light. That's why uh, Senecas and Mohawks and Lakotas and Cheyenne, they have sun dances every, sum every summertime. They send a thank you to the creator, to the sun, because the sun makes the corn grow. The sun makes our little boys grow, little girls grow. The sun makes the watermelon get big and sweet. And so if the sun ever should go out, you and I and everybody goes out too. That's why we dance, to welcome the sun so he never get tired of us. He'll always be there tomorrow for us. And so to the old brother's son, the people here who are younger brother and sister of one mind, we send you thank you, greetings, and love, and our mind is agreed. And then there's another sun of the night time. This sun of night time is called the moon. And the Iroquois Mohawk Seneca people, we call her Itisota or Sotoneka Balakwa, means our grandmother who shines her light at night the sun of the night. And she's the one that walks. Every 28 to 30 days, she walks. That means her path is for sure. When she finished 28, 30 days, she turned around and she walked the same path. And then she's got a stick. You know how like the Chicago, New York City uh, opera, operatic leader go like this with a stick? And that grandma moon, she said, okay, ladies, every 28, 30 day, get ready. <laughs> and you can't say no, neither. <laughs> and the reason she does that is to get rid of the negative things and make a new blood in the body of our mother, mothers, so that there at the bed where a tiny little baby human can find comfort and begin its growth to live and be born. And that's what grandma does. She orchestrates the birth of the babies of the nations of the world. And that's why we call her grandma. And that's the one that opened the door for you and I's arrival to planet Earth. And so to Grandma Moon, we say thank you for our birth and for the birth of our children and our grandchildren. Grandma the Moon, thank you for such great gifts and our mind is agreed. And then to the stars that beautify our Grandma Moon, because you know Grandma Moon is a woman of the night. So oh, that sounds funny. <laughs> it don't sound funny in Mohawk though. Because at night when Grandma Moon walks, she likes to doll up beautiful, beautiful gown and a diamond ring on every finger, on every toe, on every ear, on her neck, everywhere, diamond. You know what that means? The stars are the diamond jewelry that Grandma surrounds herself with as she walks the nighttime sky. And so to all the great beautiful stars, they're the ones that bring the morning dew in the dry season of summer, so life will go on. And so to the beautiful stars of the universe, the nighttime sky, we say thank you with love to them and our mind is agreed. And then to the four unseen forces that are the helpers of our creator, they're the ones that help the geese fly south every winter, and so they won't get lost. They're the ones guide them. When the fish swim in the big oceans, they migrate like the birds. And so those four sacred beings helps the fish when to go, how to go, and so they won't get lost. 
And so when the big galaxies are going up there in the universe, they're the ones that keep the gal galaxies and stars from colliding and the end of our world will come. They're the ones that keep harmony in the solar system, the four sacred beings. And so whenever we, the people, got lost in our history, the Creator sent that four sacred beings to be born as a little baby to reteach us our way and our spiritualism. And so to those four sacred beings, we say thank you to them for giving us our law, our plan, and the way we have ceremonies, the way we continue to survive. So those four sacred beings would love to say to them thank you, and our mind is agreed. And then finally, our Creator gave us dancers, just like the birds, they sing. He gave them drums and rattles, like a heart they beat. And they're the ones that are like the birds. They don't want you and I to become lonely and bored so that we get sick and die. So our singers and dancers, they're the one that's like a bird. They'll sing and they'll make us dance and they'll make us enjoy life. And so to them, their drums and their rattles that has a spirit that was sent by the Creator, we say thank you to all of those people who do the music that bring joy to our life and to the drums that contain the heartbeat of our nations. To them we say thank you with love. And nowadays, there's good people gathered here. There's one family gathered here. We bring our mind together as one and put layers of greetings and thank you and love. And this time we gather around it and symbolically we grab it and throw it high into the universe. And we say, Creator, you're the one who made all life. We thank you, we salute you, we honor you, our Creator. And we ask that today nobody gets hurt, nobody hurts each other either by words or by physical, but we have a wonderful, peaceful, tranquil day that we will have joy. And so that is our request from our Creator, our Mother Earth, and each other's, that there be peace. And with that, that's the Reader's Digest form I just told you of those original instructions given to humans as how we are supposed to live on this planet. It needs to be president study that. It needs Congress to study that. It needs legislatures of every nation of the world to revisit that so that our children will have a tomorrow and a hope for another tomorrow after that. And with that, thank you for being like wood rabbits, putting you here so tall to hear those original instructions the Creator gave us. With that, say thank you. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you, Tommy, for it. We're going to start off with Gaeli which is the song asking the four messengers or the four beings from all the directions to watch over my family so that no harm comes to them. I always like, when we travel, I always like to start off with this sound because I think of my family and I envision them with a white light of protection around them. And I'd like for all of you to do the same with your families. It's like a medicine song.
Can you hear us okay? No? Okay. Some in the <laughs> Okay. Okay, um, the next song we're gonna do is that better? Oh, okay. <laughs> The next song we're going to do is uh, called the Sky Road song. And this is in honor of all the ones who have passed on and how we need to remember that they're at peace now, that they are, they're living at peace in the sky world, and that they um, will always be remembered and cherish all the memories that we have with them. And I hope you like this song. Skanikola. I am the 
youngest of 14. I am a rich girl, can't you see? My father was a farmer, hardworking. He worked all day till the evening. His hands were callous and full of strength. He didn't speak very much English. He was a well-respected man. Who has medicine to Mosberg plan? He took care of his family. I am a rich girl, can't you see? My mother was the kindest you could meet. Her eyes, they sparkled in a smile so sweet. She loved babies, held up to her cheek. She made everyone feel unique. She was known for her butter and cream. So through all her community, she made sure we had extra money. I am a rich girl, can't you see? Our house was very old. In the winter it was so cold. Wood fell wood stove for our heat. Bottled in blankets we would sleep. People thought that we were poor because of the holes upon our floor. But I'm a rich girl, can't you see? So much love in our family. Now I have a family of my own. I try my best to guide them as they grow. Try my best to keep them from harm. Tell them stories about the farm. When it's time to turn off the lights, I tell them I love them and good night. Then I hold my husband tight. I know everything is going right. Both my parents have passed away, but I know. Bending over 
whatever streams he came across to get a drink of water. You could tell he was getting weaker and weaker. Eventually, he came to a village, and he thought, oh, good, finally, maybe now I can get some rest and something to drink and something to eat. And he walked into the village, and there were a number of long houses, long bark-covered houses, which were the kind of houses that we lived in long ago. He approached the first one, and when he looked above the entrance way, he saw a carving of a wolf. So he knew wolf clan people were living in that dwelling. And he went up to the entranceway. There was a deer skin hanging there. That was the door. And he kind of rustled, shook that deer skin to let the people inside know that he was there. And a lady came to the entranceway. And she looked at him and she said, Sayabong, she said, um, what, 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 what do you need? What do you want? Can I help you? And the man said, I've been traveling for a very, very long time. I'm hungry and I'm thirsty. Do you have any food to spare? And that lady, she looked really sad. She said, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, it's been a hard year. We have hardly any food at all. We have just enough to feed ourselves. Why don't you go to the next mom house and see if they have some extra food? And so that's what he did. He went to the next longhouse, and above the door was the carving of a turtle, so he knew turtle clan people lived there. And he shook that deer skin, and a lady came to the entranceway, and she said, can I help you? And he said, oh, I'm so hungry. Do you have some food to spare? And she said, oh, I'm so sorry. She shook her head. She said, we've had a bad year, a really hard year. We have just enough food to feed ourselves. Why don't you try the next longhouse? And so that's what he did. He went to longhouse after longhouse after longhouse in that village, one after the other after the other. And he met with the same answers until finally he came to the last one. And by then, he was really hungry and really thirsty. He could hardly stand. He was so weak. And before he could even get to that deer skin to shake it, to let the people know who were inside that he was there, a woman appeared at the entranceway. She, she sensed he was coming, and she pushed aside the deer skin, and she said, oh, you look so tired. Come on in, please sit down, rest. You look so tired, so weary. And so he did, he went in. She said, oh, I, I think you've been traveling a long time. Your clothing's all torn and dirty. And without even asking him what he needed, she knew just by looking at him. She said, I bet you're thirsty. And so she, right away, she gave him some water to drink. She said, we don't have a lot of food here, but you know, I ate earlier this morning and you probably haven't eaten in a long time. So I think you should eat the food that I was going to have for dinner. And so she prepared that food for him. And while he ate, she cleared off a place where he could lay down and she piled deer skins on that sleeping platform. And when he was finished eating, she said, please lay down here, get, get a good night's rest, get some sleep. And so he did and she covered him with deer skin and he slept a long, long time. And while he slept, she looked at his moccasins and saw that there were holes and so she started to mend his moccasins and mend his clothing and she decided she was going to make a whole new suit of clothing for him so when he felt stronger and better, if he decided he needed to travel on, he would have something new to wear. And so this lady, without even looking, without even asking him what he needed, she just needed to look at him and she knew what his needs were and she took care of him. She didn't know him, he was a stranger, but she remembered that her parents had told her to take care of our elders, to take care of our visitors. Well, the next day that man woke up and he thanked her. He said, Nyawagoa. He said, thank you so much. And she made sure that his thirst was quenched again and that he had something to eat and that he had warm clothing. 
And then he told her, he said, you know, I don't feel so well. I need, I think I'm, I'm coming down with something and I need a medicine. He said it's a particular kind of medicine and he described what it would look like and where it would grow, this plant that he needed to make a medicine so he could recover. He told her what it would look like, where it grew, what to do, how to pick it. And so she followed his instructions and she went out into the forest and she found the plant right where he said it would be. And she brought it back and he prepared, he prepared it. And he asked her to watch him prepare it so she could learn how to make this medicine. And he fixed up that medicine and she gave it to him. And then he lay down to sleep. And when he woke up, he was all cured. And everything was good for another day or two, but then he became ill again with a different, med with a different illness. And so he told her where to go to get another kind of plant, to make another kind of medicine. He told her where it would be, what it would look like, how to pick it. And so she did everything he said, and she brought it back, and she fixed the medicine for him. He, he told her what to do, and she gave it to him, and he recovered again. But this went on and on. He kept getting sick. He kept getting different illnesses. And each time, he would tell her what kind of medicine he needed, where to find it, what it would look like, how to prepare it. Each time, he recovered. Until one day, that lady went out to her garden. And when she was ready to turn around and come back into the longhouse to see how he was doing, she stopped in amazement and looked at the longhouse and she just froze in her tracks because there was a glow all around that longhouse. It was glowing with a bright, bright white light. And she couldn't imagine what was causing that. She was kind of scared. But then she saw a handsome young man come out of her longhouse. And he said, don't be afraid. It's me. I'm the old man that you helped. I was in disguise. This is how I really look. You helped me all this time, he said, and I'll never forget that. And he said, because of that, because you showed me hospitality, you showed me compassion, you showed me love, you remember to respect our elders and our visitors, I've given you a gift because now you know how to make all of the medicines to help our people. And that is the gift that I give to you. And then a thick mist, a cloud, surrounded that man until she couldn't see him. And that mist went up into the sky and disappeared in the sky. And when it disappeared into the sky, that man was no longer there. And then she knew it was the Creator who had come to visit us to see who remembered hospitality and compassion and love. And so that's how the Bear Clan, so many of our Bear Clan people know how to make medicine to this very day. And it's a reminder to us to take care of our elders, to take care of our visitors, to show hospitality. And that's how that story goes.